Uh, now we have our second speaker to the floor is uh, our risk doctor. Who knows risk doctor by the name of David? Let's be honest. Uh, no, no one knows. <laughs> we all know him by the risk doctor. <laughs> uh, Dr. David Helson uh, is an international risk uh, management consultant and a director of risk doctor and partners. At 25 years, worked in over 40 countries and published over 10 major books and more than 100 journals, papers on articles on risk. He is recognized globally as a leading thinker and expert practitioner in risk management. Uh, David has been active for many years in the Project Management Institute, PMI, and he received a PMI Distinguished Contribution Award for his work in developing risk management. He has made a significant contribution to the risk chapter of the PMI Guide to the Project Management Body of the, of the Knowledge in every edition since the year 2000, as well as co-authoring of the PMI Project uh, Practice Standards for Project Risk Management. He is the only, he claims to be, he is the only British PMI Fellow. I think David is a unique person it's in the field of project management. Thank you. Uh, David has worked to build bridges between the PMI and the professional association, notably the UK Association of Project Management, AP APM, where he is an honorary fellow. He is also a partner uh, and a member of the Institute of Risk Management, IRM, uh, of which he is a fellow also. And David, known in the world, as I said earlier, of Dr. Resk, so please help me welcoming Dr. Resk to Thank the floor. Thank you very much, Majid. Thank you very much, Majid. I appreciate your introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the conference so far. I certainly have. I've learned a lot from our other featured speakers and also from the technical track speakers. And the problem, of course, is uh, choosing between those great speakers in four parallel tracks and, and how do we decide. So I'm very pleased that I don't have to compete with any of the other speakers, that uh, we only have one session now at the end uh, and uh, you all have to listen to me. So I, I'm very pleased about that and thank you for your attention. Um, I've been asked to present a thought leadership presentation around risk management um, to talk about new concepts and new ideas in managing risk in projects. Uh, I've been involved in risk management, as Majid said, for actually more than 25 years. I started when I was about 12. That's a joke. And um, I'm still involved in risk management. I'm still passionate about risk management because it works. And if you've tried risk management and you think it doesn't work, then you're not doing it right. Um, and I'd like to suggest that risk management isn't as difficult as we think it is. It's a basic life skill. We're all alive today because we've managed our risks. If we just walked through life with our eyes closed, we would have not been here today. So we've all managed risk in some way. We are risk management experts, and it's not difficult. But the other reason I'm passionate about risk management, not just because it works, but because it's changing, because risk management is still developing, even today, even after hundreds of years, we're still learning new things about how to manage risk. And that's why I'm involved with the PMBOK Guide. Uh, I'm actually the vice chairman of the project team updating the PMBOK Guide to the sixth edition. And as part of my responsibility, surprise, surprise, they've asked me to look after the risk chapter. And there will be some new things in the risk chapter that we've not seen before. And some of those things I'll be telling you about this afternoon because risk management is changing. We're learning more about this uncertain world that we're in and more about how to manage that uncertainty effectively. So when we talk about the word risk, it's a word in common language. Everybody understands the word and we all seem to think we know what it means. I'm not sure we all share the same understanding of what risk really is. And so I'd like to start at the very first principles to make sure that we have the basics right before we go too far. Is risk the same as uncertainty? I think we all know the answer is no because there are billions of risks in the universe and we don't write them all down in our risk register. Somehow we filter the billions of uncertainties in some way 
to make a risk register. So not all uncertainties are risks, but all risks are uncertain. So how do we filter? I filter with three simple words. Risk is uncertainty that matters, because most of the uncertainties out in the big wide world don't matter. We just don't care about the exchange rate between the ruble and the yen in 2020. We don't particularly care if it's going to rain in Toronto tomorrow. It may or it may not, we just, it doesn't matter. So a lot of these uncertainties we don't need to know about, we don't need to think about, we don't need to write them down, we don't need to prepare for. But which uncertainties do we need to think about? If risk is uncertainty that matters, and we'll find in all of these different definitions, including the PMBOK guide and the Association for Project Management and the ISO standard and so on, the two concepts of an uncertain event, an uncertain condition, uh, any uncertainty that affects our objectives, uncertainty that matters is a common concept. So if we asked ourselves two key questions about the nature of risk, they ought to be these questions. Risk is uncertainty that matters, so what kinds of uncertainty are we concerned about? And if risk is uncertainty that matters, what kinds of mattering are we concerned about? And if you ask people those questions, you typically get two answers. The sorts of uncertainties we care about are uncertain future events. Things in the future that might or might not happen. And when we think about how they might matter, on our projects, we're concerned about uncertain future events that if they occurred would have a negative effect on our, on our project's budget or schedule. And I guess most of you would agree with that as a kind of a thinking basic definition of risk, an uncertain future event that may not occur, if it does occur, it has a negative effect on the project's budget or schedule. Essentially, we're thinking about threats. We're saying that risk is a bad thing in the future and we don't want it to happen to our project because it could cost us time and it could cost us money. But best practice thinking about risk management says that risk is much more than just threats, much more than bad, uncertain future events that if they occurred would have a negative effect on our budget or schedule. There are many other types of uncertainties that matter, not just that kind of threat. So let's explore in the next 10 minutes what some of those things might be. What kind of uncertainties that matter should we be concerned about in addition to the threats to our project budget and schedule? Those things are important, of course, but there are other uncertainties that matter. So if we're thinking about risk being uncertainty that matters, we want to ask ourselves, are there different types of uncertainty, not just uncertain future events? And are there other ways that these uncertainties could matter, not just posing a threat to our budget schedule, uh, our project budget or schedule? And that's the, the opening question, the, the challenge question of this presentation. What else is there which is an uncertainty that matters that could affect my project and which I need to manage proactively? So let's start with the mattering side. If we're thinking about uncertainty that matters, which impacts matter? We tend to think about uncertainties that will harm us, but just imagine something that might happen in the future that if it, if it did occur, it would save you time, or save you money, or enhance your performance, or save your reputation, or reduce accidents. Would you be interested in that kind of uncertainty, that if it occurred, helped you to achieve your objectives? Of course you would. Of course, any uncertainty in the future that, if it happens, will save time or money or enhance performance or reputation, that's an uncertainty that matters. So if we say that risk is uncertainty that matters, then that must also be a type of risk. So what we recognize is that managing risk is not just about stopping things going wrong. Managing risk is also about helping things go right. So we've seen that uncertain future events that are bad, we would call those threats. What would, we, what would we call an uncertain future event that if it occurred was helpful? We call those things opportunities. An opportunity may never happen, but if it did happen, it would help us. 
If a threat happens, we're upset about it. We wish it hadn't happened. We wish we'd seen it and tried to stop it. But if, if an opportunity happens, we're really happy because it helps us to achieve our goals. We wish we'd seen it sooner so we could have captured it more fully. So both of these things are important to us as project professionals. And both of them need to be managed proactively. So risk in terms of the effect, uncertainty that matters, the mattering, is not just about bad things. We have to be like the mouse here. In our projects, there are traps. There are things that could waste time, waste money, damage reputation, or injure people. And we have to be very careful not to allow those bad things to happen. But in our projects, there are not only traps. There is also cheese in our projects. Cheese is uncertain in our projects because we may not get it out, but what does it mean? Cheese in our projects means value, it means benefits, it means products and services that people want and need. And the challenge of our project is to get the value out whilst at the same time not springing any of the traps, just like the mouse has to take the cheese without being killed. And so what we're looking for in our definition of risk is something that includes both cheese and traps. And in the PMBOK guide definition in chapter 11, and those of you who are PMPs can recite this definition in your sleep with your eyes closed, I'm sure, that a risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs has an effect on a project's objectives. Well, of course, if you're a PMP and you were reciting that with me, you'll recognize there are three words missing. They're the words cheese and traps. Well, they're not the words cheese and traps, but they're words that mean the same thing. The PMI definition has said for the last 15 years that a project risk is an uncertain event or condition if it occurs has a positive or negative effect on project's objectives. So we've had in our PMBOK guide definition for 15 years, since the year 2000, this idea that some risk is good for you, as well as some risk being bad for you. And of course, we have to find the most efficient and effective way to get the most possible cheese out of our projects, whilst minimizing as far as possible the chance of springing any of those traps. There's always a better way. So the first thing we learn in terms of uncertainty that matters is it's not just bad things. It's also good things. Is there anything else for us to learn on the mattering side? Most people think that a risk is an uncertain future event that if it occurs has a negative effect on our project's budget or schedule. Budget or schedule. Is it only budget or schedule? Do we not have any other objectives apart from budget and schedule. Of course we do. We have scope, we have quality, we have regulatory compliance, we have safety, we have lots of other objectives and any of those objectives could be affected by uncertainty. So if risk is uncertainty that matters, we should be looking for any uncertainty that could affect any objective. It's not just time, it's not just money. So this is a much wider view of risk, not just threats to time and cost, but threats or opportunities which could affect any project objective. So on the mattering side, we see that we have positive as well as negative impacts, opportunities as well as threats, and we have any project objective in the scope of the risk process, not just time and cost. Now that's the easy side of the equation, uncertainty that matters. What about the uncertainty side? We said that risk is more than just uncertain future events. So what else could there be? In the PMI definition, which we've just recited to ourselves, or maybe just in your head, we said that a risk was an uncertain event or condition. The APM definition says it's an uncertain event or set of circumstances. The ISO guide says one of the principles of risk management is that it explicitly addresses all forms of uncertainty. So what other forms of uncertainty are there apart from future events that might or might not happen? There are four. Four different types of uncertainty that we need to be aware of which matter to our projects, which could hurt us or which could help us. Now sadly, the people in the world of risk management like to think they're rather clever. 
not me, I'm just an ordinary humble practitioner. But others have invented special names for these four types of uncertainty. And they're very unhelpful names. Names like stochastic, aleatoric, epistemic and ontological. All of those need to be managed, whatever they are. Well, I'm a very simple person, uh, so I like to take those words and, and just give them proper names. So stochastic uncertainty just means events. It's an uncertainty that could affect a future event. Aleatoric uncertainty, the Latin word alia, is a dice, when we throw the dice. And so that's about saying on the dice we have the numbers 1 to 6, we throw the dice, and we know the answer will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we just don't know which one. So the result of throwing the dice is a variability uncertainty. It's one from a number of possible uh, uh, options. The Greek word episteme means knowledge. And so epistemic uncertainty is, knowledge, is uncertainty that arises from lack of knowledge or understanding. Ambiguity risk. And lastly, ontological uncertainty, you might call these black swans, but their proper name is emergent risks. Risks which creep up behind you and suddenly bite you. Risks which appear from nowhere, which we had no idea were there until they happened. So each of these are important and each of them need to be managed. But how? Let's give some examples of these four different types of uncertainty so you could see how they might be affecting your project, either good or bad. Because these are all uncertainties that matter. And if we want to have an effective risk management approach, it can't just deal with only threats to project time and cost. It has to include opportunities, it has to include any other um, uh, objective, and it also has to include any type of uncertainty, not just future events. So let's start with the easy one. Stochastic uncertainty or event risk is the uncertain future events, the ones that we're all familiar with. Things that are out there in the future that may or may not happen. And if they do happen, they affect our objectives. So here are some common examples. You will find your risk register full of uncertain future events. Well, I hope you will. You should. Uh, because it's the thing that we're most used to. So things like key suppliers may go out of business. Or the client may, as an opportunity, change our delivery schedule and allow incremental del deliveries or we lose a critical re resource. These are things that might or might not happen, they're not certain, but if they did happen, then they need to be managed because they would affect our objectives. And you're familiar with hundreds of these different types of things. And in fact, the standard project risk management process is, t is tailored to deal with uncertain future events because we think about probability and impact, we draw a probability impact matrix or a heat map, we have standard responses for our threats and also for our opportunities which we can implement to minimize threats, maximize opportunities. Make sure those bad future events don't happen or if they do happen they're smaller. Make sure that the good future events do happen and when they happen they're bigger. That's what standard project risk management is about. That's what you'll read about in the PMBOK guide chapter 11. But it's not the only type of uncertainty that matters. How about throwing the dice? How about aleatoric? When do we throw the dice in our, uh, in our projects? We throw the dice when we are definitely doing something, but we're not quite sure how it's going to turn out. Where there are a number of possible values when we start to do the thing, and then when it happens, it will take one of those values. So, for example, we're going to run a trial and we just don't know how long the trial will take. Maybe we, we run it once, perhaps we fail the trial and have to repeat. Or maybe the trial, we plan it for two weeks, it could take one week or three or four weeks. We're definitely running a trial. The, the event in the future is not uncertain because we're definitely running a trial. We just don't know how long it will be. We're going to have some sort of productivity rate from our staff. We're not exactly sure what it's going to be. We have a target but it could be above or below. We have an estimate of our raw material costs, but the actual costs when we come to buy may be more or less, and so on. So these are things where the uncertainty is not in the event. The uncertainty is in the value of the event when it happens. And that's a different kind of uncertainty. What's the probability? 
well, the probability is actually 100%. Whoa, no, hang on. We can't have a risk with a probability of 100%. That's, that's, you know, that's breaking the law. That's not allowed. All risks, by definition, have a probability of less than 100%, right? No, not aleatoric uncertainty. Oh dear, we need to rethink the rules. We need to have a different way of thinking about these risks because they matter. So how do we manage this kind of variability uncertainty, variability risk? Quantitative risk analysis is about looking at the ranges of possible values for the things we're planning to do. So we have planned tasks, planned activities, planned durations, costs and resource levels, and for each of those it could be more or less. And the ranges that we put into our model reflect that variability. It's not the same as an event that may or may not happen, it's a variation on a known task. And that's what we do through standard quantitative risk analysis. And if you're scared by the idea of Monte Carlo, please don't be. It's really not that difficult. You probably could do it with just a day's practice. Um, so uh, I can, we can help you with that. There's a nice little paper and a YouTube video uh, on the Risk Doctor channel if you want to have a look at that. So variability risk is clearly important. And we do have a way of dealing with that in the standard risk process through quantitative risk analysis. Now we're going to get into something which is a little, little bit more hazy, something which we're not quite so sure about, and that's this, this idea of ambiguity or epistemic uncertainty. Here again, these are certain future events, things that are going to happen. It's just that there are things about them that we don't know, things that we are unsure about, things where it's a little bit vague, it's a bit foggy and misty. We can't say for certain, you put your finger on it, this is what's going to happen. It would be easier perhaps to have some examples. So we're going to launch a new product. There are existing competitors in the marketplace. They will react. But how? We don't know. Maybe they'll all go out of business and just leave us the market. Maybe they'll want to merge with us and, and, and form a joint venture or, or a partnership. Maybe they'll halve their prices. Perhaps they'll become more aggressive in their own new product development. We just don't know. And that kind of uncertainty is very hard for us to put into our standard risk process. How do we deal with that? Or we have to use some new technology, or we're, going, we're expecting some change in the regulatory framework, but we're not quite sure of the scope of that. A lot of these things are uncertainties, and they need to be managed because they could affect our project, but how? Here we need to have something of an exploratory or an experimental approach to our project. These um, types of uncertainties are beyond the boundary of what's known. So we need to go exploring. We need to explore through prototyping, through innovative uh, benchmarking, through going out there and seeing what other people are doing, through seeking advice from experts or industry specialists, and finding out as much as we can about the area which is currently unknown to us. We need to map that unknown territory and so make it known so we can choose an adequate response. So these are quite difficult because it's very hard for us to admit what we don't know, but there is so much that we don't know about the surrounding environment of our projects. And any uncertainty in those areas could have a major impact on, our, on the ability of our project to succeed. And lastly, the fourth type of uncertainty, the ontological uncertainty, uh, known by most people as black swans, although they're sometimes a little grey and not always true black swans. Um, ontological uncertainty is uncertainty that arises from a, a blind spot, something that you cannot conceive of, something that is beyond your imagination, beyond your worldview, outside of your realm of experience or understanding. And can I give you a list of those things? No, I can't. The reason is because they're outside of our understanding, because they're beyond our knowledge. If I could list them, then I would know them. And that's the problem. How many, um, how many ontological uncertainties, how many black swans are there waiting to affect your project? We really don't know. There might be none. There might be a hundred. But because they are unknown unknowns, we don't know. So how on earth can we manage those things? They're the sort of disruptive things that just arrive and we have no idea where it came from. 
Some of them are bad. We've got here the 9-11 attack. We've got the financial crisis that we're all still just about recovering from. But some of them are maybe better things, like the development of the internet, or the rise of social media, or the fall of the Berlin Wall and capital, uh, communism. So a number of things that just came from nowhere, and then suddenly we had to respond to a new world. How can we do that in projects? In business, we cope with emergent risk through business continuity. Maybe we should have something called project continuity. Project continuity management where we build resilience, where we build flexibility into our projects and then have an environmental scanning program looking for early warning signs of change. And these things we need to keep an eye on so that when they come up, we're prepared. So I think you'll see that if we think about risk being uncertainty that matters, on the uncertainty side, there are many different types of uncertainty in addition to uncertain future events. We have event risk, variabilities in things we're planning to do, ambiguities arising from lack of knowledge, and emergent risk from things that are in our blind spots. Each of these matters, and each of these needs to be managed. So finally, the challenge for us, if we're project professionals, if we're project practitioners, is to have a clear view of risk. Because if we don't think clearly about it, we can't manage it effectively. If we don't identify a risk, it doesn't mean that it's not there. What it means is that we're taking the risk without seeing. And so often on our projects, we're surprised by things, things go wrong, or we miss good things that we should have seen because we weren't looking in the right place. The problem with thinking that risk is just uncertain future events that could have a bad effect on our budget or timeline is that we're missing about 80% of the other uncertainties that matter. If risk is uncertainty that matters, we have to remember it's any uncertainty that matters. It's not just event risks, it includes these other three types as well. Each one of those we need to have an eye on. And it's not just threats, it's also opportunities, and not just to time and cost, but to any project objective. This is the risk landscape for your project, and you need to be aware of it because any of those things could affect you. So my challenge to you is twofold. Are you taking risks without knowing? Yes, you are. So what are you going to do about it? What we need to do is to open our eyes and see these other types of uncertainty that matter and make sure that we manage them effectively. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll be answering questions later on. Thank you.